Well, a pleasant evening to you in YouTube land. If you'll take your Bible and turn with me to the book of John in the fifth chapter, we'll begin there in just a moment. I recognize that many of you have been busy today about your occupation and school, but I'm thankful we've carved out this time tonight to study the divine revelation through this medium. Lord willing, and things continue as they are, we'll be meeting Sunday morning, the Lord's Day at 1045 for worship, and I look forward to seeing my brothers and sisters in Christ. I appreciate the elders, their oversight, their wisdom, their discernment, trying to glorify God and follow the New Testament pattern and at the same time keep us safe. Appreciate their wisdom so much. In the book of John, in the fifth chapter, look, if you will, at verse 39, at some words that came from the lips of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. When you go through the Bible, you'll find Jesus asked the question several times to others about himself. In Matthew 22, he asked the question to the Pharisees who were trying to trap him in verse 42, what think ye of the Christ? And what a powerful question he put before them. And one that shut them down from continuing to question him at that time. Then in your Bible, in the book of Matthew, in the 16th chapter, you'll find that Jesus asked the disciples a great question when He said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And in Matthew 16, they said, Well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked a very important and powerful question. He said, But who do you say that I am? He gave him the answer with the last two words, I am. And notice what Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so I would that we could see just exactly who Jesus is. But I've got a question for you tonight. I appreciate so much you tuning in and wanting to study, but I have a question that I think is very important for each and every one of us that calls ourselves a disciple of Jesus Christ. And that is just how much did you think of Jesus today? Just as you went about your day, I recognize being busy, and just as you come home and maybe you got your supper and now you're sitting down, I want to know just how much did you think about Jesus? Because I'll tell you, we need to think about Jesus every day of our life. Because we say we're disciples, we're followers of Christ, and He's our Master, then my friend, He needs to be the focal point of our life. Not our occupation, not our education, but Jesus is the focus of our life. And it was Jesus who said in John 5, You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you'll find eternal life. And He said, They testify of Me. Eternal life is in Christ. So I want us to consider some things we need to think about during the day about the Christ. First of all, we need to think of Him as truly God. Take your Bible and turn with me to the book of John and the first chapter. And when you come to John chapter 1, notice that the writer says in verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice that the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. Who's the Word? Jesus is the Word. He's the living Word. We have the written Word that was written down by men inspired by the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sent, but Jesus is the living Word. Look at verse 2. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Take your Bible and look in the Hebrew letter for just a moment. And when you come to Hebrews chapter 1, notice that the Bible says that it is Jesus who is the final Word. We read and quote many times verses 1 and 2, but I wonder if we've ever touched the hem of the garment to what's involved. When the Bible says God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time passed to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by His Son whom He's appointed heir of all things through whom also He made the worlds. That just goes back to what He said in John 1. It was Jesus who spoke the world into existence. So Jesus is God. He's not God the Father, nor is He God the Holy Spirit. He's God the Son. But He's deity. He is divine. And sometimes I think we overlook that and we need to recognize Jesus as God. Jesus is God the Son. But then secondly, we need to remember His humanity. We need to remember He became man. Go back to John chapter 1. 
in John chapter 1 again, notice if you will what's stated down in verse 14. And it's a very important statement. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It's interesting, the first part talks about His humanity. He became flesh. He put on robes of flesh. He became a man. Now notice they said, We beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We recognize He was also God. He was fully God and fully man. In Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, it said He was tempted in all points as we are, and yet without sin. So He was tempted. He was man. Now how can He be fully God and fully man? I couldn't explain it if my life depended on it, but I believe it by faith. There's some things this finite mind cannot explain. There's some things my weak brain may never be able to comprehend this side of eternity, because, but I walk by faith and not by sight, and one day it will be revealed to me, but until then, I believe the Bible, the Word of God. How could He be tempted? He was man, but He was also God. I want us to keep that in mind. And we need to think about the fact that He was both God and man. Have you thought about Christ today? Have you ever thought that He left the glory of heaven and became, as Paul said in Philippians 2, a bondservant? He came in that form and dwelt among us. But then think about His birth. I want you to think about what an interest when you read in the book of Luke in the second chapter and recognize how He came into this world he was born of the virgin. It was a miraculous conception. It was a miraculous birth. And we do not need to dismiss that. That's not put in there for filler material. That is important. And I'll tell you, my friend, if you dismiss the virgin birth, you dismiss all of what the Bible says about Christ. And we need to understand that Jesus was born miraculously. He was brought into this world miraculously. The Spirit entered into Mary, and she conceived and bore a son. And so when I take my Bible and I examine my Bible, I recognize that Jesus was here by the will of God, not by the will of man. But that brings up something else. I think about His temptation. If you take your Bible in the book of Matthew in the fourth chapter, you can't overlook his temptation and battle with the devil. When the devil tried on three different occasions to get him to sin, by turning the bread in, the stone into bread, or by jumping off the temple, or by bowing down and worshiping him, and notice Jesus would not yield. Jesus would not give in to the temptation. And this did not just stop on this occasion. He was tempted till he died. He was reviled and spit upon, but yet Jesus not one time did sin to another. He never did evil to another. Have you ever stopped and thought about that? Tomorrow when you're at work, I tell you what you do, you think about how they treated Jesus. And sometimes we get so fired up on social media, we act ungodly, and here they're mistreating the Son of the living God, and look how He acts. But then think about something else, His death. When you think of Jesus, you ought to think of His suffering and His death. One certainly ought not forget that He suffered before He died and think of the pain and agony He endured. Think about what He was willing to go through to save the soul of man, to save you from sin. I'll tell you, my friend, if I thought about that every day as much as I should, I would be a more faithful disciple. I'd walk closer to the steps of Jesus because I'd see what He endured for my sin. And I'd recognize it's my sin that put Him there. But I need to think of His church. Just what do you think of His church? You know, I said on the last video, I've been reading a lot on social media in different places, some very derogatory remarks about the church of my Lord. I want us to remember the church of my Lord is the bride. And I want us to remember He has one. There's many religions in the world, many different re religious groups, but there's just one Lord's church. He said in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. Singular. And remember he said he would build it. And he did because in Acts 2, 47, those who were being saved were added daily to the church. They were being added. They were being added by God to His family. Take your Bible and turn to the Ephesian letter and the fifth chapter. And time won't permit us to examine all, but notice what the Bible says here about Jesus and His church. It says that in Hebrews 5.25, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church 
and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So what do you think about the Lord's church? Remember, he gave himself for it. The church is the people who've been redeemed by the blood of Christ. It's people who've been saved by the blood of Jesus. It's people. It's people who are disciples. And I'll tell you, my friend, if I'm a disciple, day in and day out, I need to think about the one who died for me, who gave himself for me, that I might be saved. The church is the redeemed people, bought and purchased and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. But think of something else. Think of his promise. Take your Bible and turn to 1 John 2. And when you come to 1 John chapter 2, notice a statement that's made by the Apostle John. When John is writing, notice what he said in verse 25. And this is the promise He has promised us. Look at those two words. Eternal life. How much have you thought about eternal life today? Just have you thought about entering that beautiful city of God and living with the redeemed of all ages? That is the promise we have of Jesus. Eternal life with God. Every day when you're struggling and life is hard, we need to stop and think about that promise of eternal life for His saints, His people, the people who've been redeemed. But I'll tell you, that brings up something else. Just what will thinking of Jesus do for us? Just what will it do? What would be the results of daily thoughts of Jesus? First, it'll make us stronger. The more we think of Jesus, the more we want to be like Him, and the stronger we become in this world. The more I think and concentrate and meditate upon the Son of God, the more I'll be like Him. Secondly, it'll make our family stronger. We'll become better spouses. We'll become better parents. We'll become better children. Young men and young ladies, you'll want to please your parents as long as they're pleasing the Lord and trying to train you in that which is right. And you'll remember that the Bible says that we are to bring our children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and the children are to obey their parents in the Lord. The family unit would be stronger. But I'll tell you what else. It would make us treat our fellow man better. Why would we would get that down in our day and age? We need some of that so badly. You just see people, if they disagree, they go at it. And it just seems like everybody's wanting to bite and fuss and devour one another. But remember that Jesus said, be careful lest you destroy one another. And we need to think of how Jesus treated others. Open your Bible to Galatians chapter 6 and remember what the Apostle Paul had to say. In Galatians chapter 6, look at what is said in verse 10. In verse 10, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us, good do, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. That brings up the last thought of our study. Why did you not think of Jesus? Now, if, if that's true today, you didn't stop and think about it. Why did you not think of Jesus? Could it be that when I ask you the question, if you thought about Jesus today, your answer could just be no. I wonder... How many really think of Jesus? Some may feel there's no real need to. I hope that's not the case. I hope that's not the reason a lot of people don't think of Jesus. I hope they don't think there's a need to because there's a great need to. And I'll tell you something, my friend, as the people of God, we need to think about Him daily. Secondly, maybe some feel that He's not worthy of your thought. But how could that be? He died to save you from your sins. What could be more important than thinking about Jesus? And then finally, I think this is the thing that happens to most of us. The things of this world distract our thinking. Now, it's not wrong to enjoy life and have recreation. It's not wrong to have your occupation or go to school. Those things are important to get an education. But I'll tell you something, my friend. We can't allow anything to interfere with our thinking of Jesus. We need to think about the Son of the living God. Just how much did you think about Jesus today? And may God help us tomorrow think about Him more. Let us pray. Our Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to be Your children. We're thankful for Jesus. And may our thoughts be upon Him every day. May we think about what He was willing to do to save us from our sin. May we obey His Word 
and follow in his footsteps, and may he lead us home. It's in the name of your son we pray. Amen.